how far my people how na day <laughs> okay guys first let me read this there this says abraham we want a subscriber name like a squad name sort of thing example mexican crowners team crown team mexican mexican crown squad etc okay guys um thank you Darren. i appreciate this that's a very good suggestion and that's that's so thoughtful of you thank you um guys what do you think okay i think it's about time we chose a squad name i i, I think i like mexican crown squad but is it just too long and someone suggested tim crown ah i don't know but let me know what you think the best name for the squad for you all in the comment section okay guys no birthday wishes today i'm so sorry there's just so much to talk about i don't want my videos to be that long okay guys welcome to my channel um today i'm gonna start off by talking about raski mono okay the legend is dead is 60 years old after a brief illness he was rushed to the hospital at a kerja and later taken to a private hospital i think that's where he died okay he's a, a, these ones they've been doing music even before i was born okay he's a legend i grew up to know him as a legend may he so rest in peace Okay, it's a very sad story i wasn't even expecting this it looks so healthy and everything i've learned some things from this man even doing his interview like little stuff whatever he says i've learned from him no lies no lies he's an amazing amazing and brilliant reggae legend we just lost you know an icon okay it's it's so painful i'm not doing that i'm not doing that it comes naturally i don't smoke weed now so my expression does not come from that angle my special come from my environment and most time as a raster man i read the bible because most anything you're going to say in this world is in the bible what all right guys the next one i'm going to be talking about is this uber driver okay a nigerian uber driver who returned two thousand four hundred and sixty dollars this lady forgot the cash inside his car and I, i'm wondering like how can you forget a cash that much in the in a taxi why <laughs> why are some people so forgetful well he says um okay something has happened again right here make i do uber hustle get some change oh this lady forgot this envelope in my car in it is $2,460. She called some minutes after. I'm so glad I returned it. And she's so happy. She almost cried. Said it's meant for a mortgage. She gave $100, which I'm more contented with than the $2,460. Oh yeah, now I'm feeling so good right now. Shout out to you guy, okay? You're a Nigerian and you're doing something like this. Like I usually say, we have so much of these people out there, but they don't report that. It doesn't get into the news. It's just only the bad hacks and the bad Nigerians that we get to hear more in the news, uh, which is not good enough. Our press should be doing enough to making sure that things like this get into front page and not just the bad news i mean okay guys uh moving on to the next one is football and i'm just going to talk a little bit about it and just move on um the tunisian team okay the tunisian team uh the first african team to arrive russia okay so they're in russia right now for the world cup nigeria we are coming and Nigerians, please just stop this whole thing about our jersey, okay? It is we we are not there to advertise our jersey. We are there to make it happen, to to win the World Cup, even though we think it's not possible. But we are there to play, okay? So let's let just take our thoughts, our attention away from that, and think about winning the cup. Moving on to the next one is about David Doe. This video got on social media recently. Within a few hours, everyone was talking about it. Like Choma is angry. Choma walks out on David Doe. <laughs> Yo, I'm, I'm your fucking Insta, you know. Hey, look, you're on Insta. Look, both of you. Choma. 
boyfriends and girlfriends they have disagreements okay it's not it doesn't have to be perfect like a perfect relationship and within hours we saw Davido and Choma kissing after then in London and having fun they're just making you to understand that you should shut up and face your front much said about Choma and Davido right now we still have Davido last time I talked more about whiskey and now I'm gonna talk more about Davido and sadly I'm gonna come to that I'm gonna talk about that maybe in some other video but sadly we have few artists up there which is not meant to be it wasn't like this five years ago so i don't know what is going on though but right now i have to talk about davido's interview he had this interview with medium davido in this interview reviewed how he started music why he was in atlanta and how he learned how to make beats he said he learned how to make beats in atlanta with the help of a neighbor back then he explained how he always hears sounds you know coming from the guy's room or the guy's apartment and so he walked in one day and he's just like hey what's up what are you doing you know and he discovered that this guy's a producer and that is how he got to know how to produce most of you don't know david is a kind of a sound engineer he knows more about sound so that is why he could do so much even by you writing a song for him he could do so much with that song because he says when he gets the song he already knows the outcome he already knows how it's going to sound like even before he gets someone to produce it and he revealed a lot of things he said why was in atlanta himself and his cousin they were trying to do the american music but it didn't work out a lot of them tried to do the american music even banky w back then also tried out he said he tried it back then and it didn't work for him he had to come to nigeria and today we are talking about banky w there's no place like home so why was in atlanta he said it didn't work out he came back to lagos sang and produced a song he didn't tell us whether this song was Dami Duro or something but he said he produced his, his, his song that was the first song and because his family has been trying to make sure that he goes to school and leave music he ran from he ran away okay from Atlanta to London running from his family from London to Lagos just to run from his family and he was taken back to the village to go to school so he put out the song he gave his friend the CD you know I have my song I personally produce it okay take it take it you know play it in clubs and blah 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 just you know just try it out while I'm in school and all of a sudden the song became boom everybody started requesting for we sang the song like for David Doe he explained that why I was in school it was hell like he, he wasn't even vibing with anything in the school that everything was just so boring because he needed to do what he loved doing which is music now he talked about his content how he, he had to work extra hard okay he was asked you're from a rich home you're from a rich background your dad is one of the richest guy in the in the country obviously coming from that background do you think that's an advantage for you he said he has to work extra hard okay that was his answer to convince people that this is not because of his background it's because of his talent it's all about his talent which i agree hit on hit okay back to back he was putting out hit his first album was the bomb that was the best album ever as well with Skid. that was the best album ever first album he has an ep out and i hope the second album is going to be the bump people are like to be honest i don't think people agree like yo this this boy is back to probably like three years ago and i've been doing this for seven years like it was there was always an excuse you know what i'm saying if his dad didn't have money oh he has this he has that he has that but like i had to work extra hard and it's funny because you think i didn't have to work extra hard because of my dad but to prove like to just get out that shadow of being from a wealthy family he also mentioned the fact that he recorded himself okay irrespective of who produced the song he said he has a mini studio um at home so all he just do is he get the song he record it he doesn't even go to the producer studio because he has a studio since he's a producer himself although he doesn't produce anymore for a very long time now don't forget his hit song number one song was dami do and he produced that song <laughs> So it was like he played a major role in making sure that his song comes out good. Um, guys, let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. And still on David Doe, David Doe, according to reports, signs multi million dollar deal with Justin Bieber's manager, Scooter. All right.
congratulations to the video the video is really going higher like right now and, and, and seriously this the pace at which this guy is growing is very very fast and now people are saying that Choma might just be pregnant and they started showing pictures why do you keep people keep thinking like oh the video is expecting a third child with Choma I don't know but I don't think the video is expecting any third child with Choma I don't know what you guys are saying well people started putting out pictures videos and everything that is it. I don't think Chioma is pregnant, anyways. Now, talking about Davido's baby mama, Davido's first baby mama, Sophia Momodu, and she said that she has never dated a bro guy, so she doesn't know how it feels to date a bro guy. All right, Sophia is 31 years old, and Davido, I think, 26 years old. I've never been with a broke guy, so I don't even know what it feels like. Oh, cool. I have. I have. I have. I have. I have. Trouble. I think what I like Me is... Me too. Wait, can you Yeah, your aura. That's I like men with clean auras. I like yes. men who are clean. Like clean you just, just be clean. You don't even have to be like a Rolex or... It's just like you could class clean, you know? Mm -hmm. right. just and yeah she reviewed that and people blasted that. Like a lot of people blasted that. Like what do you have to offer anyways? guys let me know what you think in the comment section <laughs> this is what people are saying not me okay moving on to the next one is the big news ghana meets nigeria concert okay i've talked about this before and i said whiskey shout out to shadowali i'm coming to that but here a fan jumps on whiskey while whiskey was performing on stage and now i understand why shadowali is so pained like the other time like why would ghana I uh, mean, you know, cherish Wizkid so much or respect him that much. Guys, let's watch this video. Okay, that's a female fans right there killing herself on stage because of whiskey now let us talk about shatawali and whiskey and and let me tell you something that caught my attention and you know, makes me to want to talk about this is because or is the fact that people or blogs out there are saying whiskey reconciles with shatawali at ghana meet nigeria event Guys, <laughs> Whiskey never fought Shatawali. Okay? Why Shatawali was blasting Whiskey? Whiskey never replied. When Whiskey was invited to come to Ghana Nigeria meet Ghana Nigeria meet concert, Whiskey still showed him love. So, what are we going to call a situation where you're not fighting someone but, but the other person is fighting you? And at the end of the day, you guys all get out in public. To whiskey, there was never a fight, though. Guys, let me know what you think. <laughs> Love is the most important thing right now and that's the reason why I'm reporting this that love conquers all. We are one Africa. Okay, Ghana, Nigeria, we are one Africa and we should embrace each other anytime and support each other. I could understand where Shatawali was coming from and I know that there are people like that who just want to throw shot at other celebrities and yeah, let my fans be your fans when we finally reconcile or when we finally end the beef between us. 
okay guys let me know what you think about this in the comment section still on whiskey why whiskey was in ghana the love in him he, he tried to spread it within ghana he went to have his hair cut and guess what guys why it was in the barber's shop whiskey bought out some money okay in dollars all right it's not even naira it's not even ghana cds he bought out this cash according to reports whiskey gave this guy 600 dollars just for a haircut i mean that is it he just want to spread the love in ghana make you guys understand that there's no there's no fight and that is absolutely amazing and so thoughtful of whiskey you know helping the struggling guy out there now speaking about going to school and having your certificate and all we have techno here now techno here is saying that it's unfair that he has a lot of millions he didn't go to school that but he he, he has a lot of cash some people you know praised him why other people were like yeah but you must go to school you must encourage other people to go to school look look it's not fair man see i don't go to school though are they count money forget i got millions in there man i got fucking millions and hundreds baby but this country got changed. Graduate school got the job, man. But Techno forget that he's talented. It's not just the schooling. And, and I think that's where people get it wrong. It's not just the schooling. It's you using your brain. I think right now in a country like this, we should start thinking outside of the box to earn more money. Don't get it twisted. We have graduates, okay, that are working in oil company, oil and gas, and they are working in telecommunication, earning a lot of money, okay? Don't get it twisted all right but it's always cool to think outside of the box have a skill okay for yourself because that's what the country demands right now so guys let me know what you think about this in the comment section um below what techno said and now moving on to the next one is on teddy a teddy a baby mama calls him out says teddy a is irresponsible he's not a responsible father that was what this lady said accuse um teddy a of being a dead beat father whatever people think of me don't matter i'm tired of taking care of my son while you are there having fun and living the fake life fake everything oh yeah or we can later on the way to scatter everything with fact i'm trying to keep it cool but i guess you like wahala i got so much proof on your ass so don't f with me before i scatter your fake life momo um fear what you don't know and playing with you nico i'm allergic to bullshit before you give money to fans left and right take care of your kid first so that was what this baby mama came out on social media saying so much about this baby mama on social media and we're having a lot of baby mama who were coming out to complain about a deadbeat dad and he's not doing this he's not doing that oh, wow I'm confused guys um, this lady said that they have a five-year-old son together and this guy has not been helping financially he only sent money once and that was it and uh, said um, you are so manipulative only Momo can't see that she said here again why this mother F um, thing is okay to let a mother take care of their picking why you are here having fun now nah, I'm not one of those baby mama and she also put out screenshots she said she has proof to, like to show that this guy is irresponsible someone begging her here why teddy a was in the house so that teddy a could get votes for himself okay that she should pose that teddy a is irresponsible father in order to get votes or to stay in the house longer okay um yeah that is it about that guys let me know what you think about this in the comment section below it's very very crazy between this these two there's been reports that even nelson and the baby daddy are having issues right now they deleted each other's photos or memories that they have about each other and and they also unfollowed each other on social media even nelson finally okay reacted to that saying that they never f followed each other on any social media platforms that's not a reason enough to spark up um you know break up rumors because they were never following each other but even nelson you guys deleted each other's pictures as well the memories you guys had together all of a sudden nothing happened you just decided to do that 
uh, people would suspect something and right now i'm even not convinced as well with our interview i still think there's something going on that is it about Ivan nelson now fouls this muslim group morik they were trying to sue fouls okay or threatening fouls but now they are taking a u-turn all right like ah oh, man this is not the best thing to do this is not the best thing but they said they are not taking a u-turn okay they said it's just a change in tactics <laughs> they put out a statement okay now their statement reads the muslim right concern last week resolved to sue Folari and falano found the bad guy nigerian artist who produced the song titled this is nigeria in which a fulani man was seen beheading somebody the video also featured a job wearing ladies choreographers dancing the shaku shaku a dance associated with dog a seven day ultimatum was given for the withdrawal of the video and an apology failing which a legal tussle would be launched our office has since been inundated with solidarity visits while our telephone lines have been flooded with a deluge of calls from members friends well wishes journalists and other concerns other concerned nigerians majority of whom are of the islamic faith in view of intervention of of these well-meaning nigerians counseling from the several quarters and commitment given by us to those who interface with us on this matter an emergency meeting of morik's think tank was convened on Sunday, June 10, 2018, to review the situation in defense to plea made by well-meaning Nigerians in order to keep faith with our avowed motto, Dialogue, not violence. So now you know that your motto is Dialogue, not violence. <laughs> and to further confirm that Murik is a listening, matured and responsible organization committed to promoting peace in Nigeria, the thing tank who is it please stop who is the thing tank please resolve to drag the artists to government agencies sad, saddled with the responsibility of censoring films and videos so you know this before oh my god it is not a u-turn but a sudden change in tactics ah please it's a u-turn please hmm? Let us move on to the next news, guys. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Here we have um, Vector, okay? Vector the Rapper, Vector the Viper, all right? And most of you uh, would know that Vector was signed to YSG back then, okay? Why it was popping. He featured Nice Angeli. Which was a big song back then you know everyone singing his praise you know vector this vector that the best rapper this i don't know if it's vector just from here from the top right down and that's because vector had this beef or this feud with his record label back then he was sued to court and record and vector was banned for one year not making music that affected his career he went deeper than vector would ever imagined you know his career was just off off and it was nothing to write home about yeah doing um, an interview with sunday scope vector said that it was because he mismanaged informations okay that he regret fighting his record his former record labor he said to be honest with you the only reason i was taken to court was because i was popular or becoming popular um, it continued, I must have mismanaged information on my part as well. I hate the fact that it slowed down my music. I lost money too. But I have learned to try to be more patient and understanding with people. You cannot fight people forever regardless of what could have happened. I have reached out to my former label and we've spoken. Speaking on his regrets, he said, Everything happens for a reason and I'm grateful for my present position everyone regrets things i regret things too but i just don't dwell on them for too long i will be stupid to tell you that i didn't regret something that escalated to the extent that i could not make music for a year 
or so. Of course, I had regrets, but I never let it drag me down. I took all the music I had and invested it in a studio. So Vector has a studio to his name now. <sighs> well, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Oh, oh my neck. I'm trying to position. Um, yeah, all right. Um, the next news we're gonna be talking about those that went to see the president. Okay, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I'm talking about Toby, Small Doctor, Sound Sultan, and all. According to reports, okay, whether it's true or not, I don't know. But he said um, they were actually give, given two million naira each. Don't sell your vote to. Don't sell your vote to. Uh, it is a very serious matter right now okay the country needs a good administration i must say okay so don't sell your votes yeah don't sell your votes i think it's it's better to just vote for who you feel would change nigeria than you know people who have been there for years and they didn't do anything even while they were in the military they didn't do anything they went now democracy they didn't do anything I, i'm just saying guys let me know your take in the comment section below as well uh, yeah that's where i'm going to hold it for the day i did not wish you a happy birthday because i i knew i was gonna have a, a longer video um thank you guys for watching for those of you that are just watching for the first time um don't forget to hit the subscribe button and i want to thank you guys for the last time i asked you guys we needed to hit 500 likes in no time and yeah it was 500 likes in no time so thank you for that okay guys don't forget to follow me on social media all the platforms facebook twitter and instagram mixing crown btv mixing crown btv okay thank you and we'll see you next time peace